Got a baby hair fringe, it's all going on really. Hello my lovelies, how are you doing? I hope you're doing well today. Welcome back and today I'm going to be talking about my dance ideology and kind of how to find your voice. By dance ideology I mean things that I believe are true about dance and things that I think dance should always include. Obviously this is just my opinion, this is just what dance kind of means to me and then at the end I'll be talking about exercises that you can do to find your voice. And hopefully that will help some of you understand how to say what you're trying to say. Car, stop! So first of all, I believe that in the dance industry you should always engage students and teachers with questions. I really do believe that people should question teachers' choreographic processes, how you can make things your own. I just basically believe that you should always question what people do and why they do it and that will help you with the psychology of how you do what you want to do and how you can portray that. So dancing for me is a way that I can connect with others but not only connect with others it really helps me connect with myself and because I feel like dancing is a spiritual experience for me I constantly feel like I'm dancing with someone. I feel the most content and the most at one with myself when I am dancing. So my dance ideology here is I feel like you should constantly always be dancing with someone. Whether that may be a loved one who's passed on or someone who you love or just someone you're thinking about, I feel like it really intensifies the experience of dance for you because you constantly feel like you have that person with you. Something I'm the biggest advocate for is the fact that dance needs more stillness in it. Whenever I'm doing dance routines, there are always high intensity, no stopping, you constantly have to be moving. And there's something about that that I really just don't like and just don't really agree with. I personally feel like dancing without stillness is like a sentence without a full stop. Like, it doesn't make sense. And dancing without stopping, I feel like it's just a load of words without any meaning. Because although dance is athletic, I do also believe that it should be an artistic practice, even if that one moment of stillness is like just intentional and meaningful look. That brings me on to my next point which is I feel like you should be trying to use every part of your body when you're dancing. So whenever I choreograph anything my main focus is always that moment of stillness and I do believe that choreographing your face is probably the most important thing of a dance because you could be a beautifully technical dancer but if you don't put any emotion into that then you're just doing the steps, you're not dancing, you're not connecting with yourself and then you're not connecting with others. Dancing isn't just kicks and everything like that, dancing really is just whatever you want it to be and that's something that I never knew or understood growing up and that's something that I just really want to get across. And obviously when doing choreography people are just thinking about what are my arms doing, what are my legs doing. The thing that I try to focus on the most is what is my face doing because I feel like I've developed such a great connection between my soul and between my mind. I can bring myself to feel emotions and that will come through on my face. And I think this is true of every type of dance. I feel like we're all speaking the language of dance but we all have different accents, whether that might be you communicate through hip hop or you communicate through contemporary or you communicate through ballet. And I really do feel like you can communicate anything through any type of dance. You don't need to be doing contemporary to be sad. You don't need to do hip hop to be hard hitting. And you don't need ballet to just be graceful. That kind of brings me on to my next point, which is dance is kind of like a colour wheel. By this I mean there are classical styles of dance that are recognisable by everyone. So ballet, tap, modern, hip hop. I really do try and mix the styles to create new colours of dance. And that's kind of what I mean by the colour wheel. So mixing hip hop and contemporary, you can create something beautiful within that wheel. And so every kind of dance kind of emulsifies into each other. And that's something that I really love about dance. Being a diverse and adaptable dancer, it's about knowing how to apply yourself to certain situations. Training within each of the different coloured sections can help you with all of your styles. I you believe that to be a teacher, you have to be a student. You have to be able to funnel through other people's experiences to then inspire your own. So I really, really do admire teachers who go to other people's classes. Okay, so that was just a little bit of explanation to how I view dance. 
and the next part of this video will be about exercises you can do which will help you find your voice. I feel like I've really found myself within the past six months to a year. I am developing all the time and part of this is down to some exercises that I have adopted from other choreographers and other ones that I have created myself. So the first exercise that has really helped me with finding my voice is freestyle roulette. Freestyle roulette was invented by Galen Hooks and the premise of the exercise is that you improvise to a piece of music that you've never heard before. And obviously because I've been doing freestyles every day of 2019 so far, a lot of the songs I've improvised to have been ones I've never heard before and I can say for a fact that this is something that genuinely really really helps. For example, when Bury a Friend by Billie Eilish came out, the first time I listened to the song was when I was dancing to it, and it really heightened my experiences when I was dancing. I feel like because you don't know what's going to come in the song you tend to listen more and this is really great for creativity because you have to think more about what you're doing but it's not even just thinking about what you're doing in a conscious way I kind of view it as really unconscious when I've been doing these freestyle roulettes I haven't consciously been thinking oh I need to now do something here I need to do that I need to do blah 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 I've just processed the music a lot more and I've accepted it more into my body. It's definitely helped with how comfortable I feel doing improvisations. The second exercise that I've been doing during 2019 has been blind improvisations. So every so often I will put a blindfold, a bandana, an eye mask, something like that over my eyes and I will just dance. And although it kind of seems dangerous, it is one of the most freeing experiences as a dancer. I feel like we always kind of get a bit too caught up in how we look and not being able to see really helps with thinking about things more. And because you can't see, your hearing and your thought processes are also enhanced. Obviously if you're going to do this exercise, do it in a familiar location and make sure you're not going to whack anything because I have done that. Also combining exercise one and two is the most helpful thing. I have done a few freestyle roulettes blindfolded and that has doubled my chances at creating something that I like. I normally don't like some of the things that I create especially whilst improvising. Not being able to see and not knowing what the music's going to do is probably the biggest challenge but it's also the biggest help. The next two things I'll be talking about aren't necessarily exercises that you can try just like improvising and stuff like that. It's more some ideas that I created that if I get to teach a class or a workshop in the future I would definitely love to include this because I feel like it would really help people's creativity and originality and ability to think on their feet. So this first exercise that I would love to teach is interpretation choreography. The idea behind this is that students would either be blindfolded or they'd close their eyes and I would just say choreography. Probably be as vague as possible and what I'd absolutely love is for students to just have their own interpretation of what I'm saying. Being given the opportunity to put your own interpretation on the choreography is something that I really feel quite passionate about. Like I really do feel like that would help people. If I taught this at a class, at the end I'd just let people share with each other what they've created and I feel like it would be a great way that people can bounce off each other's ideas and you can take things away from class. Another exercise that I would love to bring to dance is conditional choreography. By this I mean a choreographer would give you two options of your first move in a class and they would keep giving you two conditions until you filled up the piece of music that you've been given. And by the end of the class everybody would have been able to watch each other's creations and hopefully they would all be different because everybody has a kind of tendencies to different things. So that's pretty much the end of my little video, so thank you so much for watching. Let me know your own dance ideology down in the comments because I would love to know how you guys view dance. Give it a like if you liked anything that I said or if you're going to try any of the exercises. If you would like then share this with another dancer and subscribe down below for more content from me. So thank you so much and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers, bye!